Hello YouTube, Bane666 here. Well, I'd like to start this video with some good news for a change. Often uh, the topics I talk about are quite depressing, uh, but this time there's actually some good news. You may have heard of Bettina Arndt before. She's an Australian who in the last couple of years has been fairly active talking about men's rights issues. In fact, she was at the men's rights conference in Queensland uh, I think it was in 2017, if I remember correctly. Gee, that time's gone quick, hasn't it? And she's become a very outspoken MRA and anti-feminist. But her actual career in the media goes back many, many decades before that. Anyway, uh, on Monday, last Monday, it was Australia Day, and she won an Australia Day award, which I think is great. Uh, finally, an outspoken MRA has actually won... <laughs> some award presented by a government. This is amazing. Normally all we get is hate, scorn and lies. So I think this is a positive uh, for a change. Now, as you may have guessed, a lot of people were really pissed off at this, which is more good news because these people are fucking scumbags and deserve to be pissed off. One of these people was uh, domestic violence campaigner Rosie Batty. Now, just in case you don't know who Rosie Batty is, uh, this is what she had to say in Victorian Parliament a couple of years ago. It is really confronting, but not as confronting as being one of those women who have been murdered this year. Up to two women a week are being murdered. If you do not see that as a gendered issue, I have no idea what we have to do to convince you. Because right now I do not hear of two men a week being murdered at the hands of their partners. I do not know of one in three men who are violated and physically assaulted by their partners, unless indeed it is another man. Ah, I see. So it's a female gendered issue with uh, a woman, two, up to two women dying a week in Australia. Well, is that correct? Uh, kind of. Uh, the actual statistic is a woman, on average, dies every six days. So, yeah. Mainly one a week, but there are some weeks in which there are two. But what she fails to tell you is the male equivalent statistic. Probably because she's totally unaware of it. And that's one male every ten days. Well, if you look at, at women who, are, uh, who have uh, died as a result of domestic violence or, or, or intimate partner violence, I mean, the, 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 the uh, rate that's often, uh, often quoted in Australia is one woman per week. And that's a, that's a terrible rate. The uh, rate of men who are dying as, as a result of domestic violence and into a partner violence is roughly one man every 10 days. Where are you getting those figures from? Oh, that victim comes from uh, the Australian Institute of Criminology. You're saying that one man in Australia dies every 10 days as a result of domestic violence? Absolutely. I can absolutely uh, support that with government data. Okay, um, I, I want to do some further looking on that because that is an astounding set of figures, if that is in fact accurate. David says, is this guy for real? Next he will tell us the world is flat. Uh, and a couple of other people just questioning the statistics, the figures quoted by Robert there. Uh, to shed some light on that, Dr Samantha Brooknell is from the Australian Institute of Criminology. Are those uh, domestic violence and, and homicide figures accurate? That uh, one man every 10 days dies in, because of domestic violence? We can say in 2010-12, which is our most recent published homicide data, 75 males and 121 female victims, uh, were, there were 121 female victims of domestic homicide. So that equates to one male was killed in a domestic homicide incident every 10 days and one female was killed in a domestic homicide incident every 6 days. In this general discussion around uh, intimate partner violence, and domestic violence generally, there needs to be an understanding that, that boys and men are also victims. Dr Terry Goldsworthy is from the Criminology Department at Bond University. Chris has just made the comment, men's rights activists lose their credibility with misuse of statistics. The statistics that uh, are referred to as opposed to men's are the same are accurate and there's actually um, a much longer study than the one that uh, he referred to. It goes over 10 years which validates the same type of trends. Irene says, men's rights rubbish. Your guest annoyed me. His stats are wrong. Irene, thank you. And I, um, we've just had uh, the Institute of Criminology come on and confirm that uh, the, the basis of those statistics were accurate. 
So in other words, on average, that's about five women a month and about three men. Suddenly, it's not so gendered, is it? Now, you may be thinking, what's the big deal about Rosie Batty Bain? Because, uh, you know, we've heard it all before. Uh, aren't feminists like this a, a dime a dozen? All they do is talk about female victims and male perpetrators and how men are taught to be bad by the big bad patriarchy, etc, etc. Well, Rosie is a little bit different. You see, she has a bit of a tragic story which she then used to launch herself as a domestic violence expert. Now, you may be thinking, was she the victim of her ex-husband? The answer is no, her son was. Tragically, in 2014, her son, Luke Batty, was brutally killed by her ex-husband. Now, at the time, this is what Rosie Batty had to say. No one loved Luke more than his father. What triggered this was a case of his dad having mental health issues. He was in a homeless situation for many years. His life was failing. Everything was becoming worse in his life. And Luke was the only bright light in his life. That's a direct quote from Rosie Batty. So you would think that maybe this case should be about men's rights, right? I mean, we have a male victim and we have a male perpetrator who was mentally ill and homeless. Surely that is something that we should be talking about, right? Because he clearly didn't get the help that he needed. That is a men's rights issue. But strangely, it's been turned into a feminist issue where we talk exclusively about female victims and male perpetrators. How strange. Do you have an understanding as to why those protests are there? I do not. Uh, this is my first time visiting Australia. I'm curious what is different about Australia that makes this topic so polarizing and and so fearful to people that they actually want to shut it down and silence it and pull it from theaters. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why, why there's so much resistance in Australia. Cassie, I think it could be to do with the fact that a couple of years ago, our Australian of the Year was a mum who lost her only son at the hands of his father in a domestic violence incident. One woman is killed every week at the hands of domestic violence. It's, it's really on the agenda here in Australia. It's not tolerated and we're really trying to move forward and, and get it on a path where women aren't dying. I think that is why your film has hit a nerve. And it was her son that passed? It was her son who was killed by his father. That's, I, I didn't know about that, but that is interesting because it, it shows that there are male victims of domestic violence. Sorry, that, that's the lesson you took? Now the thing is, if this was a mentally ill mother killing her child, the media would be looking at it in a very, very different way. We wouldn't be talking about females being taught to be violent towards males. We wouldn't be talking about a matriarchy. We wouldn't be talking about toxic femininity. We wouldn't exclusively be talking about female perpetrators and male victims. What we would be talking about is mental health, which is what we should be talking about in the Luke Batty case. But unfortunately, it's been hijacked by feminists. So, now that you know a little bit about Rosie Batty and what a scumbag that she is, uh, let's go on to see what she said about Bettina Arndt winning the award. Rosie Batty dismayed by decision to give Bettina Arndt an Australia Day honour. The 2015 Australian of the Year can't understand why someone has been rewarded for work that pits men against women. The former Australian of the Year Rosie Batty has said she is dismayed by a decision to award an Australia Day honour to the controversial writer and media commentator Bettina Arndt. Arndt, a journalist, author and sex therapist, was on Sunday made a member of the Order of Australia, the third highest rank in Australia's civic honours system, in an announcement that has drawn furious criticism from women's groups. Batty a family violence campaigner who was the Australian of the Year in 2015, told Guardian Australia she found the decision to honour Arndt very unhelpful, a view she believed most people working towards gender equality would share. I was completely shocked and then I was quite dismayed, she said. I couldn't help but wonder how it could be that somebody has been rewarded for work. That actually pits men against women. Re rewarded for work that actually pits men against women. Uh, you mean like being a domestic violence campaigner 
who excludes male victims, even though her son was one, demonises men, turns all women into victims, and uh, ignores female perpetrators. Is that the type of person you're talking about, Rosie Betty? Because uh, it sounds a lot like you. No self-awareness, I guess. And uh, she describes it as very unhelpful. A view she believed most people working towards gender equality would share. So I guess you're talking about non-feminists then. Because uh, the feminists definitely aren't working towards gender equality, are they? If they were working towards gender equality, then they would be concerned about all victims of domestic violence, despite their gender. And they would want consequences for all perpetrators of domestic violence, despite their gender. And they wouldn't be hiding statistics about male victims, would they? They would be talking about everyone. That's what equality actually is. But when you gender domestic violence, instead of talking about it being generational... What you're actually doing is working against gender equality. What you're actually doing is pitting men against women. This is what feminism has been doing for, oh, at least 50 years when it comes to domestic violence. Just ask Aaron Pitsy about that. So I find Rosie Batty's comments about Petita are amazing, although really not all that surprising. And of course, Rosie Batty ignores the fact that two-thirds of parents who kill their children are in fact female. I wonder, Rosie, should we refer to that as gendered? No, of course not. Let's just go back and blame men. I mean, that's much simpler, isn't it, Rosie? But Rosie Batty isn't the only one who's outraged over this award. The Victorian Attorney General has also called to revoke... Bettina Arndt's Australia Day honour. And there is a petition to revoke Bettina Arndt's Australia Day honour, which has been signed by 33,000 people, some of which have left some very interesting comments, which we'll get to in a minute. But first, let's read what this petition actually says. Men's rights activist, MRA, Bettina Arndt has been recognised in this year's Australia Day honours list for services to gender equity through advocacy for men. As part of these alleged services, Arndt interviewed twice convicted pedophile Nicholas Bester for her YouTube channel, in a segment she called Feminists Persecute Disgrace Teacher. Okay, so I did a search for this video and I could not find it, so I'm guessing it's either been made private or deleted. So the only information I know about it I've got from the media, which, uh, as you may have guessed, is somewhat biased. And I'd much prefer to watch it and make up my own mind rather than go by biased news sources. So this is a difficult one for me to comment on. Uh, the little information I do know is it seems the guy in question uh, was 58, he was a teacher, and he slept with a 15-year-old female student. Now, just let me say before someone else points it out in the comment section, that does not make him a pedophile. Uh, now, I'm not justifying what he did, by the way, but for someone technically to be a pedophile, they have to sleep with someone who is prepubescent, and 15 is not prepubescent. Now, having said that, uh, he should still be prosecuted for that. Anyone who's been watching my channel for a long time knows that I have no tolerance for teachers sleeping with their students. That's what we like to call statutory rape. But I imagine most people who are using this as a cudgel to attack Bettina Arndt also haven't seen the interview. You know, something you should probably do before passing judgment. I'm also betting that these people are dead silent whenever there is a female teacher who sleeps with one of her students and gets off with a slap on the wrist. This is something that happens all the time yet there seems to be no one commenting on it except for a handful of MRAs like myself. A former Coleraine High School teacher convicted of having sex with a student is getting out of prison. Nine on Your Side reporter Zach Pitts is live with why the judge said yes to Julie Helton Roeder's request. Zach. Well, good afternoon to you. She only spent six months behind bars. She was actually serving a two-year sentence this morning. A judge here at the Hamilton County Courthouse decided it was time for the former teacher to be a mom again. 
Hudson Schroeder has an eight-year-old daughter, and the judge says they've been separated long enough. Prosecutors argued saying that she hasn't showed any remorse since her conviction. They also say she violated her position of trust and authority when she had sex with a student. The judge ultimately decided she had spent enough time behind bars, but told her she ruined her own life and will never teach again. I indicated what you did was stupid and irresponsible, but I do feel that uh, um, you've paid some debt to society. So for that reason, um, I'm going to grant the motion. And the former teacher will have to register every 90 days as a sex offender for the rest of her life. Reporting live downtown, Zach Pitts 9 on your side. Uh, it would be strange for someone to claim that they're really concerned about the children and, you know, they really don't like pedophiles. Yes, I know, technically not pedophilia. But they don't like pedophiles, yet ignore that same thing when female teachers do it. It's very strange. It's almost like they're not really concerned about the children at all. They're just trying to find some dirt to sling at Bettina Aunt. So why would they attack Bettina Aunt then? Well, because she's an outspoken anti-feminist. I think that's why they hate her. And, you know, saying that she's pro-pedophile uh, is much more likely to get public support than saying she disagrees with feminist ideology. That would be my guess. But, like I said, I haven't seen the interview. If I watch the interview, I might completely change my mind and think Bettina Arndt is completely wrong. But I have to reserve judgment until I've actually seen that interview. Let's continue. Bester had previously described his sex crimes as awesome. Despite the domestic violence epidemic in Australia, Arndt has also claimed that programs to combat domestic violence unjustly demonize men, despite the fact that men are overwhelmingly perpetrators. <laughs> I love it when a feminist quotes a claim made by MRAs and scoffs at it, as if it's insanity, and then in the very next sentence, proves us right, just like in this particular case. Yeah, uh, you're right, the perpetrators of domestic violence are overwhelmingly men, if you delete all the female perpetrators and ignore all the male victims. Under those circumstances, you're correct. Uh, now, that wouldn't make you a very good person, though, would it? That really wouldn't make you an equality advocate, would it? That wouldn't make you all too honest, would it? Of course, if you do delete all the male victims and all the female perpetrators, and instead promote just female victims and male perpetrators, you know, what's commonly known as feminism, uh, then yes, yes, that, that would be considered demonizing males, wouldn't it? Just like if you ignored white crime and only showed stats for black crime and pretended white crime never happened and that only black people committed crime, that would be considered racist, right? So how is what you're doing not sexist? How is that not demonizing men? And that the deeply misogynistic culture that produces domestic violence can only be found in countries like Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia, but not in Australia, the United States and Britain which are egalitarian, despite also being allegedly hostile to men. Okay, here's a simple question for the ladies out there. Which of these two countries would you prefer to live in? Afghanistan or Australia? Shall I give you some time to think about it? No, I don't really need to, do I? I mean, the answer's obvious. Obviously, women are treated better in Western countries than they are in certain other countries. That's just a simple fact. And yes, Western countries are much more egalitarian. That doesn't mean that men don't have issues in Western countries, or that women don't have issues either. And for the record, I'm not saying either men or women are oppressed. That's a totally different argument. Feminists seem to be a little bit confused about this particular thing. But if you think that Australia and America and other Western countries aren't hostile to men... Uh, how do you explain the sentencing gap? Need I point back to the clip I played just a little while ago about the female teacher sleeping with her male student, underage male student, getting a two-year sentence and then being let out after six months? And she was told that, you know, it's uh, she's ruined her life. Nothing about the boy's life was mentioned, though, I notice. And one of the reasons she was let out was so she could go and continue being a parent. 
Now, I wonder how many male teachers who have slept with female students get let out of jail after six months so they can continue being a parent. Probably not that many, right? In fact, they're probably never allowed to see their kids again. And for the record, I'm not advocating for male teachers who have slept with their students. I'm saying that female teachers get lenient treatment and that should not happen. Not only should she have served the full two years, she probably should have got a longer sentence. Not that we'll ever hear any feminists bring that up, right? Men's rights activism of the type harmed practices and the Australian government rewards is recognized by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a product of extremist supremacist ideology. It has no place amongst our national awards. Ah, uh, how typical. The Southern Poverty Law Center fallacy. Yes, they're a very, very unbiased uh, organization. I imagine we can believe anything they say, right? Without any skepticism or any questions. Sure we can, sure we can. The amazing thing is, if uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center applied the same standards to feminists that they do to MRAs, even if they applied one-tenth the standards they apply to MRAs to feminists, they would find feminists the biggest hate group in the world, right? They would call them an extremist group, they would call them a supremacist group, they would call them a hate group but they don't apply the same standards because of their ideology. Funny that. Isn't it strange when you look at two groups unequally and you apply a standard to one that you don't apply to the other, you get one group looking far worse than the other? Yeah, it's funny how that happens. How strange. Yeah, it's the type of thing that the KKK does to black people, right? So anyway, just to finish off, uh, let's have a quick look at a couple of comments from this petition and then I'll finish up this video. Giving Bettina Armed an Australia Day Award is a spit in the face of all the women murdered by their partners, all the women living in violent relationships, and all the women working for less wages for the same job as their male counterparts. And it sends a very clear message that this government is not only not concerned about violence against women, or equal pay and rights for women but that they actively support maintaining the subjugation of all Australian women. Well I think this is a fantastic comment um, by this particular man talking about the subjugation of all women which is a topic that more men should be talking about right I mean anyone who's studied feminism knows that uh, but this brave man has clearly made this comment about uh, subjugation uh, of women in Australia and uh, what's what's his name uh, let me just see what he's oh hold on uh, the, the person who left the comments called Michelle that's that's not a man's name well that that's confusing uh, how did this woman get access to a computer I mean she should be chained to the kitchen sink right naked and pregnant isn't isn't that what the patriarchy says? Um, but clearly she's escaped and somehow got access to her overlord's computer so she could leave this comment because, as we know, all women in Australia uh, are subject under subjugation by the evil men. Um, I don't know how she knew his password. It was probably something simple like patriarchy. Uh, I'm going to have to change my password to everything now. But anyway, I think she makes a good argument, this poor subjugated woman. I mean, she brings up the wage gap, and, you know, that's never been debunked before. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't keep a straight face while saying that. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, according to her, women working for less wages for the same job as their male counterparts. Well, you know, there is a solution to that, and it's not feminism. No, uh, what it is, is working like a man. That's right, ladies. If you want to earn as much as a man, the simple solution is to work the same number of hours. Or, or possibly work more dangerous jobs as well. But, you know, uh, that might increase the number of women who die at work, and I guess we can't have that, can we? It also wouldn't give feminists like this one something to whine about and claim that they're under subjugation. Uh, next. I'm a man. I do not need activists to campaign for my rights, because I already have them. I don't know what cynical motives this woman has for her words and actions, but they neither serve men nor women, 
other than the perverse outliers of both those groups. Well, thank you for that comment, Ray, who is a man. I, I'm guessing he probably has to tell a lot of people that. But Ray is not just a man, he's clearly a very, very well-informed and educated man, because he knows that there are no men's rights issues. He knows that when a father goes to family court to get equal custody of his child, that the court automatically gives it to him. And that, you know, uh, fathers are never separated from their kids. Never happens. Right, Ray? Has never happened in the history of mankind. Something we definitely don't need to talk about at all. Ray also knows that newborn baby boys are protected under the law and their bodily integrity is never violated. Right, Ray? Circumcision just doesn't exist. Who would dream of doing such a thing to a child? Right, Ray? Just doesn't happen. Definitely don't need to talk about it. And Ray knows that when a man and woman commit an equal crime and they go before the court, that they're treated 100% equally. Right, Ray? There's no bias in favour of women. Women don't get lighter sentences or let off scot-free. People don't make excuses for female criminals. No, Ray, that never happens. These aren't things that we need to talk about. We should just all shut up and stick our head in the ground. Right, Ray? <sighs> anyway, on that note, I think I've had too much stupid for one day. Uh, you know, at first, it's amusing... At first, I can kind of laugh at it, but you just reach a point where you just want to bang your head against the wall. And uh, I, I think, thanks to Ray, I'm past that point now. I'm delighted to introduce a great friend of this show and a great Australian. She won this morning for her commentary, her social commentary, an AM in the Australia Day Honours, and she won it for her gender equity, I'll get it right, through advocacy for men. You heard that right, gender equity through advocacy for men for men. Welcome, Bettina Arndt, back to Outsiders. Thank you. <laughs> now, the reason we're excited, Bettina, apart from you winning a gong, congratulations, that's fantastic, that's excellent, well, well deserved. Of course, you did great work in the, in the 70s and 80s on, on all sorts of different things. But this key phrase, gender equity through uh, advocacy for men, has this morning sent the left wing mad. They've gone nuts on Twitter, <laughs> readers been telling us every five minutes, and another one. Oh. Explain why this, tell us first about why you won the gong, and then explain why this phrase has upset so many on the left. Well, I was nominated presumably for my, my work over the last 45, nearly 50 years. And, um, and just briefly tell us, oh, well, take I, us back I, through... I was first well known in, in the 1970s for, as one of Australia's first sex therapists and getting out there... And feminists? Teach, ...teaching Australians about sex, yes, promoting women's rights, Try to get women to have a good time in bed was one of my initial goals. Uh, Did you succeed? You know, doing sex education and through the media mainly. Uh, but then I spent almost 20, nearly 30 years as a social commentator, mainly on gender issues and increasingly um, talking about the male point of view. And so, the, and now. Why the switch from advocating for women to advocating for men? Because feminism for me was about. Uh, a level playing field, equality for men and women. And when feminism tipped over into advocating for women at the expense of men, I wasn't interested. And we've got a society which is badly tilted in favour of women, disadvantaging men on, on all sorts of areas, and a very unfair, unfair treatment of men. And I've had enough of that. And I've been out, particularly for the last few years, working full time to advocate for men in a range of areas. Of course, the classic has been my campus campaign to draw attention to the illegal kangaroo courts being run on our university to adjudicate rape. And that's so again, just, I'll just pause you there. So you've been doing a campus tour and we saw, we talked to you at the time, there were, we, everybody would be familiar with the photos of you being heckled and all the fuss around that. Uh, but what you were basically drawing attention to, the fact, uh, in your opinion, that rape wasn't the big 
or, or well, you explain no, what you were saying. The, the, the point is that our universities have decided to usurp our criminal law system, set up their own courts, their own regulations to adjudicate rape because they're trying to get more convictions. This has been driven by a small feminist group who don't believe we get enough rape convictions, particularly of these young men in date rape situations. And as happened in America, they want to set up their own system, which totally denies the accused normal legal rights. They, acu they adjudicate on the balance of probabilities rather than the, the stricter legal uh, decisions that are made in the criminal court. And that's what they've done. And in, in November last year, a Supreme Court decision was made saying this was illegal for the universities to do that. And this was you and Amanda Stoker both were involved in this and talked yeah. about on this program. Um, so, okay, so talk us through now gender equity through advocacy for men. Well, what gender equity, mean? people normally talk about gender equity as being all about giving women more advantage. That we, li that we live in a male a society which is where women are suppressed by male patriarchy and we need to do more and more and more and more to promote women. And I argue that we, if we, gender equity is supposed to be about fair treatment for men and women, and that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm working to make men and women be treated, both be treated. But aren't fairly. men, oh, sorry, James, but aren't men already uh, doing pretty well on their own? You know, they, they dominate in, in the highest paying fields. They're, um, yes, well, they don't do as well at school uh, and university as, as women, but in their work life, they. Uh, do they need advocacy? Do they need that help? Well, who does? If you, the working situation is very complex. Who does all the dreadful jobs in our society? The garbage collection, the dangerous jobs, the risky jobs, the firefighters, and mainly men. Uh, men do the risky work. Sometimes they get paid highly for that. There, there are still a fair number of women, men at the top for a variety of reasons. We've only had recently had women moving through to those upper echelons of managerial positions and being pushed now into those positions at a great rate. Um, I mean, there are so many, if you, you mentioned education, 60% of graduates are now women. At what point are we going to worry about the fact that so few males are graduating from university? James? But the, and I gotta say, Petita, congratulations, and as a man, thank you for your advocacy on my behalf. But I wonder if it's actually not a bit a bit of a misnomer to say that it's advocacy just for men, because to my mind, all of this feminist campaigning, this idea that women are victims, men are horrible, all of that just pushes the sexes apart. And so, to me, do, do, isn't there a big problem that? Men and women just are getting along worse because of these campaigns that demonise men. Everybody loses when uh, when you wind up demonising just one side unfairly. Absolutely, and I, I mean, I get every day hear from women, hear from mothers of sons, who hear from women who have men in their lives who are being unfairly treated, men who are being subject to false accusations of violence or abuse, uh, men who aren't being treated fairly in our court system. Women everywhere are really worried about this. They see the current move uh, approach to feminism as really divisive as you say drawing creating divisions between men and women a very uh, bad move Rita? for our society uh, there, i mean if you want to see how just utterly bigoted and intolerant and hateful much of the feminist movement is towards women, conservative women, Thanks. then just have a look at the reaction to you. And I was going to read out a tweet here from a lady we got to know late last year. Remember Sherelle Moody? Yes. She's the one who said the firefighters are going to go back and bash their partners yeah. and we've got to watch out for that. Even the Greens distanced <coughs> themselves from this woman. Uh, she works for us, James. That's a, a mm. nice, isn't it? She's a, one of ours. Anyway, she said, Roger. giving Bettina Arndt this award is like uh, giving George Pell one for child safety. Arndt's work is not about gender equity. It's misogyny driven hate designed to keep women barefoot, pregnant and tied to the kitchen sink. Is that what your aim is? Are you wanting women <laughs> to be out of the workforce, out of universities, Your response, Bettina, and then we've got to go. In the kitchen. Of course I'm not. I, mean, I, I think it's, I celebrate women's achievements, the choices women have. We've never had a more privileged group of women as a, women in our society. And that's a wonderful thing. But let's offer fair treatment to men too. Bettina Arndt, you are a great advocate both for men and for women, which is, of course, gender equity and your goal. Thanks so much for coming back on Outsiders. And, of course, congratulations. You are the first Outsiders to win an okay, AM. You so, you know, I'm sure there will be many more. You never know. Well done, whoever decides these things. Thanks, Bettina.
Tage noch Munition, danach dann nur noch unsere Hände. Woher sie kommen, wohin sie gehen, darüber denken wir nicht nach. Ein neuer Anfang, ein altes Problem, wer schickt hier wen ins Grab? Wir bleiben hier, wir haben die Macht. Let's